Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Big episode today, the holiday special, Christmas special. Uh, Having a lot of fun catching up with my buddies, Brandon Barbier and Ryan Mills of Outrun the Fall. Uh, we caught up the other night, hung, hanging out in their practice space, just talking snacks and Christmas uh, traditions, movies, uh, all kinds of fun stuff, and a uh, big show they got coming up. So, uh, hope you enjoy this one. Do want to remind you, as always, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Friendship Brewing Company in Wentzville, Missouri. Serving up all your craft beer needs. Over 25 rotating taps. So all kinds of tasty beverages. All kinds of delicious food. Burgers, nachos, flatbread pizzas. Pretzels, salads, all kinds of uh, your favorite eats out there. And uh, you can see the full beer menu, food menu, and much more at friendshipbrewingcompany.com. And while you're there, you can take a look at their... uh, events calendar and coming up this week thursday they do a single bingo every thursday night december 21st will be single bingo let it snow theme friday december 22nd mickey scott will be out there at Pittman friendship brewing company in wentzville and on saturday december 23rd jeff walchowser returns uh, also, they're doing a holiday flight series for their beers, so you can come out and try some of the holiday beers and have a real good time out at Friendship Brewing Company. And uh, you've heard me talk about it, but in the, uh, in the summer, they launched a brand new location in Flint Hill, Missouri, and uh, you can come out and check out the brand new Fly High location and have a great time out there. Same great beers, but a whole new dining experience from the Fly High Kitchen. And great live music happening out there this weekend on Friday the 22nd from Robbie Bertlow. And Saturday, December 23rd, you got uh, Steve Kyle out at Fly High. And uh, again, you can find it all, friendshipbrewingcompany.com. Get plugged in on Facebook and Instagram for more info. And come visit them at the new Friendship Brewing in Hannibal, Missouri also. If you're up that way in Hannibal, great news. Friendship Brewing is coming to you. All right, that is it for me, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. I hope you are having a great time with friends and family uh, celebrating the holidays. And, um, yeah, if you need anything from me, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, everything at Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast at gmail.com if you want to email me, rockpaperpodcast.com for everything else. Uh, thank you so much for making this another great year. Appreciate you all. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy this brand new episode with Brandon and Ryan from Outrun the Fall. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. What's up? This is Brandon from Outrun the Fall, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. What's up? This is Brandon from Outrun the Fall. <laughs> you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. <laughs> Your turn. What's up? This is Brandon from Out- <laughs> B-Power, I don't baby. sound like that. <laughs> What's up? What's up? It's gotta, it's gotta keep getting it's, exaggerated, you know. What's, what's, what's this? Dude. Yo, 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 yo! I, I totally heard a '90s rapper in there, yeah. like you know, Biggie Smalls or something. Is that what I sound like? What's yeah. up? This is Brandon. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? This is B Dub. This is this is, is B Dub. <laughs> From outrun the fizzle. <laughs> yeah, I'm rock paper pizzle.
I think that's got to work. I think we'd, we got to have something there. <laughs> I'm Ryan and I play guitar. Yes. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> rock paper podcast. Scissors beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beat scissors, Shane covers nonstop. Never know what new kind of guess that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the rock paper podcast. Double decker fudge round rolling round. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero. He's your bestie. Rock, paper, podcast with Shane Presley. Rock, paper, podcast. Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here. Rock, paper, podcast coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out tonight with returning guest... Ryan and Brandon from Outrun the Fall. Welcome back, guys. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I'm uh, very excited to be back here with you guys. It's Why? Been a, well, I don't know, but <laughs> oh, I, I like you guys. Same. Uh, yeah, man. Dude, it's Christmas time. I like seeing all my favorite people around this time Thank of year. Thank you. So. Sure. Yeah, a big Christmas spectacular episode. Yeah, this is the Christmas special. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I said, who who likes Christmas more than Ryan and Brandon? And I couldn't think of anybody else. So it's not like, a chance. Yeah, it's not a chance because Clark Griswold, maybe, but yeah. Clark, man, and I mean, it's it's mainly the the Christmas snacks. Pretty much Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. Think about the food. I mean, that's really why I think I, about it. That's why I got you guys here. You guys are my resident snack experts. Uh, and we got, you know, it's a great food, uh, and snack time around this time of year. So it's like, that's why we're here. So, yeah, man. Uh, I know last, I mean, we've had some heated debates, uh, over the years of doing this show, uh, <laughs> for everything from pizza to chicken strips and, and, uh, everything else. But, uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some snacks, uh, for Christmas uh, or holiday themed, uh, stuff. So, um, but yeah. And we have a big show to plug, which uh, was a, just another reason to get together. But um, but let's start with uh, Christmas stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we um, – so uh, let's start with like um, traditions. Do you guys do any like um, – do you have anything like that comes to mind when you think about Christmas traditions or things that you like to do with your family or – or uh, anything that grew up growing up you, you guys used to do or anything like that that comes to mind when you think about this time of year? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of weird as as I've got as I get older, like I'm starting to implement some of my own traditions. So right. the ones I grew up with are different. You know, I actually talk about it all the time. Like I grew up with grandparents that had a farm. So Christmas we always drove to the farm. So there was always like yes. packing up in the car, driving to the farm. The farm was your textbook, storybook, Christmas. You know, if it snowed, it was even more majestic, you know. But and we would do the we would do the damn thing on the farm, drive home late at night, and then uh you know, and then wake up the next morning and do like, you know, the whole Santa present thing at like our house um and that's drastically different than it is now you sure. know so it's 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 that's a good question you know uh the 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 stuff i grew up with is different than what i'm implementing now but um yeah we uh, like a very similar kind of thing like uh, like we used to cut down a fresh tree every year uh, and yeah. we had the real tree i've since gone fake because sure. uh the technology and LED lighting has um, come a long way, so right. it simplifies life in that department. So yeah, those real trees don't have really good LEDs. In them, no, so. no, they don't. They don't come with any of the LEDs actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> when they're pre lit, I'll consider it. Yeah, they're, they're analog. So, yeah, step, <laughs> step your game up, trees. Right. I went digital, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah what about but, you, man? You you got like stuff like you do every year? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Not really. Uh. Like growing up, like was really like a very similar kind of thing. Like uh, my grandparents, when they were still around, like you know, it was like 
we got it all together on my mom's side and my dad's side. And, you know, and it was like a lot of fun with all my cousins in there and stuff. But it's so different today uh, because all, well, they're, you know, after my grandparents passed, everybody kind of started doing their own thing. All my cousins are now, you know, my, about my age also, you know, and they're, uh, you know, late 20s or 30s and some in the 40s or whatever. And like, so it's, uh, they've all got, well, or most of them have kids of their own. So they, you know, they're doing their things, but mm-hmm. it's just hard to get us all together anymore. So it kind of stinks in that sense. But uh, I do miss those times where we got to do all the fun things as a family. But uh, yeah, I like, okay, so here, here's a good uh, sidebar question to that. Like, are are you, is your home uh, a hardcore no Christmas until after Thanksgiving? Um, I I, uh, cause yeah. I, cause I, I, I held that line yeah. against a lot of adversity in this household. All right. Um, and that, that's something that was like always a tradition for me. Um, and then I also, I did it with my kids, you know, in the home when I lived with them, you know, full time. And now, even though they, you know, they're only sure. here half the time or whatever, like we, we, there was some people who live here who still wanted, they wanted the Christmas tree put up fucking before, before yeah. it even, before Thanksgiving dinner was even hot. And I was right. like, nope, the day, the day after we'll do it immediately. It'll be the first activity we do. And yeah. I held that line. So what, what about you? Where do you fall well, on that? Well, Stacy's birthday is December 2nd. Okay. So I, for me personally, she might do some things, but I don't start till after her birthday because like, I was like, we got to, we go from Thanksgiving mode to birthday mode. Then we go into Christmas that's, mode. So you get, so you give the birthday some space. Right. To yeah. Yeah. That, that makes yeah. sense. That's Make cool. it special. Right. Yeah, that's good. I think, I think that's, that's a smart move, man. Yep. So, uh, and then after that, we can get into, we, cool. I, think, I think we put the tree up on the third. So that was, yeah, man, I just, I can't go too early. I got, I got to give Thanksgiving its space. Just right. like Stacy's oh, yeah. birthday needs space. Sure. You know, that, that turkey I, dinner. I mean, is, you're eating leftovers for a couple more I was going to say, you, so. you got leftovers going on. The right. sandwich <laughs> made with Miracle Whip the next day alone, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, so, uh, getting into food, what is there a, uh. A Christmas or you know this holiday season uh, treat that you guys look forward to, or uh, a dessert or a meal or anything. Is there any? No, no. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I have a my great grandma used to make a, a pie called chocolate Sunday pie. Hell yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in. I well. Big sponsor. Ironically, the only chocolate in this whole thing is a little bit of shaved chocolate on top of the whipped cream as like a garnish. There's no other chocolate in it. It's more of like a vanilla custard style pie. All right. Um, And, you know, a crust made from scratch or whatever. You know, my great grandma was old school, so she always did. She always had the recipes that did that. Um, The funny thing is that my mom was was the only other person who can make the pie turn out like it's apparently it's kind of a hard pie to get to like be done right and so uh, after my great grandma passed my mom took up the mantle of making this pie well lo and behold nobody liked the pie but me and my great grandma (laughs) (laughs) so probably because it wasn't chocolate (laughs) probably probably it's it's, it's, but it's a delicious pie i enjoy it my sister thinks it's disgusting a lot of people in my family think it's thinks it's gross (laughs) um but my mom makes two every Christmas, and one of them is marked with my name. Do not touch. This is Brandon's whole chocolate Sunday pie for himself that, yeah. he, that he takes home. And my mom makes sure she <laughs> – matter of fact, uh, she lives kind of far away, so I don't see her all the time. Um, we actually swap pie plates. I get the pie plate with a new pie in it, and she gets the empty one from last Christmas. There you go. Back. <laughs> refill this one. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my mom like refills the pie <laughs> plates, and it's great because it's a whole pie to myself. Right. I can literally just eat out of the middle of it, and then no one else is going to be pissed off. <laughs> And it's so awesome. Oh, um, yeah. And I, I get it every year. It's been like that since I was a kid. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah my mom, she, she always makes – That's <laughs> when the texts start up, like, what time are we getting together for Christmas? I already got the pie plates ready. <laughs> right. Like, I'm making you a pie. Well, now like we always. can discuss it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> everybody's like, are you getting one of them gross pies again? I'm like, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't, Don't even look at it. Don't say a word about Don't that. Don't even look at it. <laughs> It was, I don't think it was, uh, it wasn't a pie, but, um, kind of that triggered a memory of like, uh, uh, I remember my aunt used to always make like, I think it's like that, um, ambrosia salad. 
Yeah. Okay. I think, but we always like just jello and whipped cream and yeah. fruit. Well, we always yeah. just called it the pink stuff. Like, yeah, that's, yeah well, that's it. Yeah. Nobody know the new pink bro, stuff bro, or pink bro, fluff. Bro, I've heard both. But that was the kind of the same thing. Like it was like tradition. It always was there, but everybody. Did you ever have a tra- green one? No, we always did pink. My grandma did a green one one time. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting a little, little more festive with that one. I, guess. I don't know if that, I think it was like pistachio. Yeah. All right. Uh, but it was like, turns out like nobody actually liked it, like it, but it was like always there. It's like, I'm, I just thought that was funny that it's like, but well, we continue to keep making it every year. And stuff, yeah. you know, it's like, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Ryan, no, no treats he's looking forward to. And I just yeah. eat, I, I eat <laughs> everything. I mean, I, if it's in front of me, it's going down, but no Christmas and uh, uh, Thanksgiving kind of, they've got a lot of the same vibe for me, right. similar yeah. dinners. And I love it because I love Thanksgiving dinner so much. Like I really, really do. Like I, I, people talk. There are some usual suspects that you see. Right. At both yeah. yeah. And I, I, I look forward to it so much in the ham, you know, you yeah. want to do the spiral love cut love ham. I love I'm in. We usually try to do the turkey. Like I think we did a ham too, but I think we. Seems we like do we both. Try, it seems like we try to do thir- turkey for Thanksgiving and ham for and, and for ham for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. right. It usually switches up to ham, but if it's turkey and we ham, do, right. we do both. That's so, because you're smart. Sometimes we'll put out like loaves of bread and like cheese, yeah. where you can make ham sandwiches. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that. But so yeah, to answer all that food stuff, it's just I love those dinners right. so much. Anything that goes with it, the appetizers. Wasn't there like one year, dude, you were like, you were like, me and mom went to like, like, you just like went out to eat because it was yeah, like, it, it, you, yeah, like, you guys I, weren't I've, doing anything special. I just never had like, like since I was little, the, not a ton, not a big family. To, we don't, I just a lot of them are gone sure. and grandmas and all, you know, so we just never did that. But yeah, we, we'd go like Golden Corral and throw down. You're thinking, you know, that'd be awesome. It seems laughable. Like, I go, dude, there's a lot of people there, and we were all, we're all in there throwing down. Yeah. No, my cousin last year didn't come, like, we didn't do a big family one last year for some reason. And I asked my cousin, like, what they ended up, and she's like, dude, we stayed home and ordered Chinese food, and it was awesome. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, that actually doesn't sound bad. Then there was a year my Italian grandma at the farm decided it was going to be an Italian Christmas, and it was all pasta. Yep. And Italian food. There was no traditional fare. Like there's gnocchi, you know, red sauce that had been simmering for a couple of days on the stove, like from scratch, so from, from, you know, from the old land. Yes. Like, seriously, my Italian grandma was hardcore and I believe it. Fresh, like fresh made breads and stuff uh, to, to like dip in all the sauces and stuff. White sauce, red sauce. Like it was a whole like Italian spread. And that was a trip. Like I had never experienced that like on a holiday before. You know, and she, you know, she was, she was your traditional, like, I'm going to put out a few snacks and it's like a six foot table, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. like full of dips, assorted dips and chips and <laughs> snack foods. <laughs> you know, they, they just couldn't stop making stuff. All right. They're yeah. a snack train. Well, and you know, she just lived on the farm, you know, she was a, she was like a homemaker. So That's what like, she did. Yeah. All day long. She was just like, oh, I got the yeast going for the bread that I'm going to bake. Cool man, sounds amazing. Yeah, dude. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. I do miss talking about. It's kind of making me reminisce a lot, dude. I, I do. I do sometimes miss the farm. Sure, the yeah. farm holidays, man. For sure. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It, it was a different vibe back then. Yeah. I uh, I brought over some um, of one of my favorites, uh, the Little Debbie Christmas tree cakes. Oh, yeah. Man, and, uh, what the jumbo version? Yeah, the uh, gas station model. Yeah. <laughs> So we tore those up uh, pre-show. They, yeah, that, they didn't last that didn't long. make it to the- Thank you so much for that. But uh, that's always one of my, you know, that's when you, you know, that's the reason for the season, I feel like. Uh, so <laughs> It's one of them for sure. <laughs> yeah, I get excited when they yeah. start putting up the cardboard things. And the Christmas things. cap and crunch. Yeah. There you go. I yeah. I got into that. That was, yeah. one of, that was one of the first things I did for Christmas. <laughs> I got into that. That's, I, that's I, when I you got, know. I got, I got into the Christmas yeah. cap and crunch. <laughs> That's how I get in the holiday spirit. It really puts me in the mood. <laughs> well, it was the double box from Sam, so you got two Oof. bags in one box. <laughs> yeah. That's that's two breakfasts right there, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, Follow me for more recipes. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, I was, we were just talking about, I made me real proud to hear, um, but I was talking to my mother-in-law. She just went down to... Uh, Jacksonville, where my brother-in-law Sean lives, and uh, R.I.P. Yeah. Oh wait, nobody's dead, are they? No. What? Okay, never mind. Sorry, 
No, I thought I thought it was a celebration. And uh, shit, can you start over? <laughs> hey, everybody! everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she went down there, and like uh, he was like having dinner, and he took like an entire box of cereal and poured it in like this massive bowl <laughs> and ate it like you know just like with a big spoon and i was like yeah that's how you do it man like she she got in this bowl like as like a serving uh you know like mm-hmm. for you know <laughs> or something like that for like chips or whatever large mixing bowl and yeah and, and he's using it for a cereal bowl and i was like that's how you do it man that's, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you, you, <laughs> at least a half gallon of milk right for sure i i could put away some cereal yeah. that that's that's one of my vices yep uh but uh yeah what about uh what about movies is there a uh, a certain um movie that you guys uh like to put on is it to get you in the into the spirit um yeah um there's a couple shows like like the office like i'll watch all the christmas episodes of the office but i was a huge office fan yeah. so um i don't mind walking through those um Movie wise, obviously Christmas Vacation. You know that's that that always that always gets a run through. Oh. Um, <laughs> Home Alone. Home Alone's a big one for me. I, I like watching that one, and I actually had some fun with that this year because Danielle had never seen that movie. What? Can you believe that? How She's, do you miss that? She, I don't know. I don't know how you even avoid it. <laughs> I don't know. That, I was like the pop culture references that you've just gone right. over your head over the years is astounding. Yeah. Like I was like, we got to watch this now. And we did. And it was, you know, I got to watch one of my favorites. Still um, holds up, man. Yeah. I, Easy on the Pepsi. You know, I, I usually hit a Harry Potter or two just because that gives me a Christmas vibe for some reason. Hogwarts. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, dude, I can't explain it. I just. It's mad. You, I, I, you I know if we're listening. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I watched Human Centipede. Yeah. Oh, God, now I got your attention. Yeah. No, you know, I knew you weren't listening. It's about gift giving, guys. Yeah, that, know, like a, that's like a. That's more uh, of a Festivus. Feed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's over here reenacting yeah, scenes. Right. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, the, the, the obvious ones, you know. Um, I So I have a funny one. Uh, we just watched it a couple nights ago. Um, maybe you're familiar with it. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch that as a kid? No. It was like a Jim Henson thing. Yeah. Like oh, okay. Kermit, Kermit the Frog like narrated. And it was all these like misfit puppets that didn't make the actual Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> and they used them to make this movie based on like a book. And it's about this dude who he like he enters a battle of the bands with a jug band. And... Nice. <laughs> like the the I guess the bad guys in the movie are this like metal band called the Nightmare. <laughs> so it was like the first metal band I ever liked as a kid right. <laughs> was in this Christmas movie. And they of course they they all go in the battle of the bands and the jug band plays their song and it's a, it's a feel good like family kid movie. It's heavy on the Christmas vibes and it's one of those like I watched that VHS at my grandma's house every Christmas season yeah. for as long as I could remember. So like. It's weird. It's weird. Like Danielle's da- teenage daughter came walking through and was like, "What the fuck are you watching?" Because <laughs> I'm just sitting there, just smiling on the couch, right. just reliving my childhood, <laughs> like vividly. Yeah, <laughs> just completely disassociating on the couch and right. traveling back to my childhood. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a good time. Nice. Yeah, I. I mean, I've seen. Uh, I, I know, like, I can see it uh, definitely because, like, some pictures have been popping up recently and stuff, like. Uh, but I uh, I don't know that I've ever actually sat and watched the whole thing, so I need to probably it, do that. Okay, okay, so I will admit it's kind of hard to get through now as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I know why my parents were drawn like driven nuts. Like, you want to watch this movie again? All right. Again? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This movie rules. Yeah. Um, I uh, what about I you? just what, watched. What are, your, what are your favorites? Well, I just watched Elf the other night, and I was uh, laughing hysterically, like uh, at some of that stuff, especially like early when he's like goes to New York and he's like getting the pulling all the gum off the rails and stuff, and like <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the, the runs into the world's best cup of coffee, you know, and stuff <laughs> like that. And, like, yeah. uh, man, that was uh, just Will Ferrell was so good at that uh, role for sure. Like he's nailed it, and. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I was I was really enjoying that. And but Home Alone for sure is like a classic I put on every year, one and two. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, always a, a good one. Uh, <clears throat> man, I uh, I put that on, not really thinking too much about it. Um, when my mom passed and like, shh, I was a mess, like <laughs> trying to watch it. Like when he goes to the Christmas tree, uh, you know, in, in New York and, and uh, the second one there. And, yeah. And uh, I was like, uh, didn't expect to get that emotional watching Home Alone, but it was like a real hit. It hit home for sure. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. Heck yeah, man. Uh, I was like, damn it, Kevin, why do you have to, you know, turn out to be a good kid? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right so, uh, but uh, yeah, man, that's uh, those are always fun. And of course, I'm wearing my uh, Clark Griswold and yeah. Christmas vacation. Yeah, I mean, dude, of course, that one, that one's like, it's the OG. It's got to be know, number one. It's got. It's got to be I one think of it's the top. It's, Christmas yeah, for, for for me, it's it's literally my most quotable movie of any movie of any uh, like you know I I'm a Farley guy. You know that Tommy. I I know those movies like my but that movie like every line I could pretty much quote like as it's rolling I could say it but and now that's annoying for anybody else watching but I can quote pretty much every line right and, and yeah. I really, some some people might not know this. Did you know that that movie was made first and then Vacation. Was the second movie? Made? I don't think I knew that. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, Christmas Christmas Vacation was the first one. Really? Yeah, that's what like they like they lose Juliette Lewis by the second one. Mm-hmm. Different different girls playing the daughter in that one because Juliette Lewis obviously was started making other movies and shit. Yeah, but yeah, I, I that is a, that's a fun fact on that. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. don't realize because Vacation feels like the first one. It sure does, but it's not. So. All on, so Christmas Story. Does anybody like that? The Shoot Your Eye Out movie. Sure. Yeah. So that, the twenty four hour thing killed that movie for me. I used to like it, but that, then when they started playing it all day, that was kind of the thing ruined it. That's kind of what made it like for me. Like we would go to my aunt's house on Christmas Eve when I was a kid, and like that's like that's why like it's got a lot of memories for me watching it. That you know, it just that took me to that place, and all I right. and and I miss those days. But on the flip side, like you said, you can wear it out pretty quick, too. There's a sequel. Well, there's a couple sequels. One of them's trash. The one that came out last year, I recommend it. Yeah. It is very good. It's actually got a lot of the same characters in it, obviously grown up, but it's done very well. It's The, the cheese factor's pretty low. Highly recommend watching it. All right. Was it just Christmas Story 2 or what? I no, I, I, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I actually don't remember what it's called. Because like. Yeah, I saw. I've seen some things like with uh, the guy back as as Ralphie, grown up and stuff. A Chris, a Christmas story, Christmas. Yeah, it's actually. I yeah, liked I, it I a lot. Wa- I didn't watch that one. I, I liked it a lot. I'd, I'll probably watch it this year too. All right. Yep. Have to check that out. It's it's so his 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 dad passes away, and it's pretty much kind of in honor of him, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a watch. I'm always uh, looking for something new to put on. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Well, uh, I'm excited about it, and uh, I'm just uh, it's fun, you know. It's fun getting into the holiday spirit, doing all the things, doing the uh, seeing the lights, doing the doing all the things. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, other than that, we got a shifting gears a little bit for you guys, band wise. Right after all this. As the uh, you know things uh, close out the year, we, you know we'll, we'll hit uh, New Year's and then we go right back uh, in uh, in work mode. And you guys are starting off twenty four with a big old show, um, and uh, we got uh, Outrun the Fall at Diamond Music Hall on January fifth. They always play there with special yeah, guest with special guest trapped. trapped. <laughs> Yeah, we we feel pretty headstrong about this one. Yeah, not to echo the same thing you've heard a lot, but yeah. to stand up and rock this one out, dude. Yeah, 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 man, it, bring it. It was it was a good opportunity. Johnny over at the club hit us up and was like, "Hey, do you guys want to do this?" And we're gonna hit the ground running in 2024 like that, just right out of the gates. And we still have some stuff in the pipeline that didn't, you know, that we didn't finish up in mm-hmm. 2023. So, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're going to be able to kind of ride that momentum a little bit into some of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a good time. Um, Traps, one of those, they were one of the, they were one of the last, like, I guess, rock bands where rock was still mainstream. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That, that kind of faded away, you know, uh, a few years 
after that. And so, and that's where a lot of our influence comes from. You know, it's, we're, we're not quite metal. We're not rock, but like, we're, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, we're in, we're in this weird, like aggressive rock we're in this weird space of like because of our influences of bands like trapped you know like i i mean i used to go to shows and see them play all the time and now right. it's kind of cool that we're going to open for them um but i mean you know that's all well and good but i mean i'm i'm swinging for the fences i'm going to try and put the best show possible on here you know i'm pretty sure i saw them Around, they were one of the first shows the at diamond too that a lot oh, of people yeah. may not realize that and ryan and i kind of he was, I, I was like, didn't you go to one of the early shows at Diamond? And he goes, actually, it was Trapped in Saliva. And it was like the first show they ever put on there. Huh. So this is kind of, for the club, that, 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 you know, some people on one side of the line might be like, why? Why hire a band like Trapped? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why. Right there. Like, for them, it's a big deal. Here's a band that, that was there at their very first show, and they got them booked again. Well, and to be fair, Trapped, Trapped was the band, tra Trapped was interested in playing at Diamond. You know, there, there's plenty of other options in St. Louis. They know they're not going to bring a monster crowd. That That's okay. There's other Last small places. at the Firebird. Yeah, yeah. At Firebird was like 2016, 17, whatever. But they, uh, yeah, so I think it's great that they actually, like, contacted Diamond to play there because they played there before. That that says something for that club. You know, I'll always defend Diamond. You know, they're, they're, they're a, it, it's, it's a great club. It's yeah. in, you know, it's in St. Peter's just outside of St. Louis. Um, plenty of good places in St. Louis, but this is a little West for the folks that don't want to drive downtown, you know, and, and even ones that do, they'll come from St. Louis to rock out there. It's a great place. Um, and, um, yeah, the fact that trapped asked again to play there. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, if you like, like Brandon said, there, there's all the, the, the hubbub, you know, they just, the singer voices his opinions a lot. He puts them all over the internet, you know, and everybody's got and some an people don't like that. Some people just don't like the opinion. Again, I, I we're not bros with him, you know. Yeah, you know, no, it's one of those I things don't. where it's like, and I'm sure, I'm sure we won't be. But at the same time, uh, you you can't, you're not just going to crucify somebody for their opinion unless it's. I mean, it's got to be, you know, some ins well, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Just right. to to have it, you know, it's yeah. We just go out and we're we're gonna play with another national rock band and, and yeah, we're have just gonna a good do, time. We're just gonna do what we do, you know. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I'm swinging for the fences. I'm gonna put on the best show I possibly can. Right. Yeah. You know. Hopefully, hopefully they show they better up bring that it. night to work. Yeah. You know. And this is just uh, just you two, or just us two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They talked about building the show up, but I think they just uh, they just kind of looked at it again and said, no, let's just let's just roll it like this. I mean that. That sounds uh, good to me, man. I, I like, uh, you know, some of that, some, especially because, like, you know, we we're, we're no stranger to the uh, four or five band bills. Sometimes, right, absolutely. You know? yeah. Some yeah. of those, can, some of those, can they don't, be, they don't have the stamina to, to, yeah. to go all through all five bands. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's, been there. It's fun and all, but like, you know, it's just like it makes for a long night sometimes. So, um, yeah. I, who was I talking to? Someone recently, like. Why can't we make like matinee shows a thing? Yeah. Like, why can't it be cool to like go catch a whole show <laughs> and still be home by nine right. p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> like, there you we can start earlier. It's okay, especially if it's indoors. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it's it's true. Like it's true. Then it doesn't matter whether it's light or dark outside. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just saw something. It was a guy, Zach Bryan, a country <laughs> singer, said, like, if we could uh, normalize 6 p.m. shows, that would uh, be legend, legendary or something like that. Like, you know, it's yeah. like, but I don't know. I mean, it's. But then you have to bring back 24-hour diners so you can go get food afterwards. Right, exactly. I'm into that. Now I'm in. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm always looking for that angle. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I was going to say, I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, again, it's a, been a long time, but I'm pretty sure I saw Trapped at uh, at Pops, like in around that oh two or era. First album era. And, yeah. and then like it was like a snow core tour. I think. Hey, I was there. Yeah. And, Thornley and Strata. Yeah, Strata. Yeah. Dude, those guys rule. Strata was awesome. I yeah. I don't know what happened to them. I love that album too. Yeah. Piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, that's like the only real like live uh, experience. I, mean. um, But uh, that was. So, yeah, at that show that they were, they were firing on all cylinders. That was peak trapped right, right. there. 
I mean, maybe not peak trap, but they were well on their way. Original members. Was he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was oh, yeah. Egypt Central at that show too? Or maybe or next something? No, I they forget. weren't at that. It was it was Thornley, Strata. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, I can't remember when trapped. I- Trapped. Yeah, it was Snowcore, yeah. though, was the name of the tour. Right. Yeah, it was that Pops. But they did it a couple times. I think they did it multiple years, Snowcore tours. And maybe it was the next we one. Opened so. for, we opened for Trapped at the Firebird and what? 2016? Yeah, it was 16 or 17. 2016, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And, I mean, they were already kind of starting to play smaller clubs. You know, they were kind of a nostalgia act already at that point. Like, just play the hits, man. No one, no one's worried about any new trap music right, right now. Like, And the bands that embrace that do really well with those kinds of tours, you know? I mean... There's, there's there's no shame in it, man. They they, they, they just go back on the grind, but right. you know, like I said, all, and then you just got a you just got a strong character, <clears throat> yeah. kind of has that gravity where he draw he argues with anybody that has anything to say, and you know that's just gonna you know. Uh, yeah. Snowcore 2004, Trapped, Finger 11, Smile Empty Soul, and Strata. Boom. Yes, yeah. that's what it was. I knew Smile Empty Soul was in there. I yep. thought. Finger 11, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, that, that show ruled. That would have been a good time. Yeah. yeah. That, um, speaking of like the nostalgia act thing, man, like uh, I uh, made a post the other day and um, I don't know. I think some people thought I took it the wrong way that I was kind of trashing on some of it, but. Uh, the fact that uh, the big amphitheater uh, theater, uh, the the shows this summer include yeah. Limp Biscuit, Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, it's a step back uh, in time. Creed. Ch- Creed, Chili Peppers. I was just like, I, I just made me laugh because now, I you know, um, when we were kids coming up, like, you know, it was always like whatever, you know, Journey and Def Leppard and whatever, all these bands that our parents were listening to and things. And then like now we are in our forties or whatever. And like, you know, all the bands that we grew up with are now at the, are doing like, uh, these shows like, and it, yeah. it just, so it made me feel <laughs> like laugh because I'm like, now I, you know, I am that old guy that in the, got the, the summer, the right. summer, the summer yeah, concert pa- right. series package. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, it's it's crazy. Um, it, it the ba- the bands that do that, they just they fall into the right lane, you know. That they, they they realize like, hey, we don't need to rush the new the new album out, right? You know, we let's go. You know, Olympus. We're gonna go out there. We're gonna play break stuff. We're gonna play Nookie, and then a handful other songs that we have rehearsed, and it's gonna and it's gonna be cool as long as we as long as we stay in that lane, you know. Um, yeah. No deep cuts off Gold Cobra. Okay. Like, <laughs> right. no one, no one, no one wants to hear that shit. Yeah. As long as so, I, that's why I said, if the, if the majority of the set list includes $3 bill, y'all, and significant other, I'll be happy because that's the, the early stuff's like, that's where some of my yep, favorites. Their first three albums are where they usually pick yeah. it from. Creed right. will be interesting because we talked about this in one of, one of our rehearsals. The, that song they did when they, when they tried to come back the last time. The recorded works of it sound amazing. It's it's fucking it's awesome. I mean, it's everything that Creed you know should have become. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but then I saw them perform that live, and like Stapp couldn't. It it was all studio work. Like yeah, he couldn't. He had backup singers, and he still couldn't like pull it off live. And and it, and it just fell apart. So again, it's like I hope Creed does the right does it the right way. You know, if they if they get everyone, you know, if they just take everyone higher, yeah, like <laughs> they're, they're, can, you know, they're, can you even? They're, yeah, I mean, stick to the hits. Let's get that guy from the bring everybody back the to two thousand. Like, yeah. let's get that you know, guy on there. Yeah, <laughs> Chili Peppers are a hard one because I saw Chili Peppers multiple times in their in their like peak. Yeah. And it, what what it is now it, that they're starting to become old dudes that are like just keeping it going. <laughs> I I just saw them not too long ago, and it was it was a lot of fun. Was like, it good? Yeah, it was a good show. Still, oh, I mean, man. like yeah, I mean, Flea's you know sixty, but they still <laughs> Flea like he's still a madman on stage and like so. Sure. Um, I thought they were really put on a good show. The one that so uh, the Strokes opened up for him. 
and That'd they be good. They were that was disappointing, like for me, like because well, I think I'll, to be fair, like I think it was a bad night for because it uh, so they like massive storm right before the show. Uh, I went down to Orlando to see him, so there was like this big uh, storm blew in. And it was an outdoor soccer stadium, so mm-hmm. they had to like postpone everything. But then, like, then they uh, so and it's still kind of like sprinkling a little bit, but you know, the show went on, and so every, like everybody's sets got cut, uh, the openers like down to whatever a couple minutes, whatever they did. And so I think uh, by the time I got in, I only really caught like last night from the strokes, and what got me was like. You could tell they were not having fun up there, and mm-hmm. then like, and then he's even like, when they went to that song, and then he just like drops the mic and walks off stage, and I was like, I don't know, that kind of bothered me. Like I was like, dude, I get like, you know, your set got cut short mm-hmm. and all the thing, but like we're also here, you know, out in the rain and everything else too. Mm-hmm. Like so, I mean, we paid to see this, right? Yeah, you know, come on, man. So anyway, it just kind of bothered me, but uh, then of course. Uh, Chili Peppers redeemed everything and made it worthwhile. Sure. Yeah, and professionals. Was, yep. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh What's your take on like the super, super nostalgic acts? The ones are like like would you go to like a Motley Crew show present day or like go see Kiss on the Farewell Tour Part if, Six? If I could afford it, I would have went to see Kiss. Uh I, I that probably would have been a good time. Kiss, Kiss probably would have been a good time. Like I mean, I get it's all cheese, but like mm-hmm. they they're entertaining. That's for sure. Like and um, I saw them like several years ago. Like you know whatever oh four or something like and uh, with uh, Poison open and Rat and like and it was one of the like greatest rock and roll shows I've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, like, you know, know it's gonna be a good yeah. time. Like blood gargling bass solo from Gene in the yeah. rafters, and then uh, you know slamming guitars in the night and stuff. Like it was just uh, it was like everything you expected from a, a you know rock and roll Kiss yeah. show. So, mm-hmm. but uh, I think the whole thing like they're, they're like what going into being avatars and dude. Stuff. Okay, like, so that that's it's like textbook right textbook Kiss right, right there. It's like. Okay, we never stop. Yeah, our meat suits are done. We can't. Yeah. We can't do the kiss thing, you know, anymore. We're seventy years old, <laughs> but they're like, now it's gonna be <laughs> virtual like kiss, virtual yeah. kiss, and we'll still take all your money. Sure, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how that's gonna. I can't imagine that being people like, are gonna go. All right, what are you just like? Because it'll be a celebration. The Tupac one was cool. Yeah, the Tupac hologram when that popped out a few years. Back, I mean, that I was g- cool. <laughs> I can get like if you were like just gonna sit on your couch with your like your VR headset on or something like that and, and like, like be at the show. <laughs> yeah, like that. Still, I did, still I have bad like, seats, yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Still have bad dude, seats. Dude, email them right now. They'll yeah. be like, do a VR VR kiss show. Yeah, we'll charge maybe $200. I'll go, maybe I'll go. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you put uh, the VR headset on, play something else. Like yeah. I skipped the show. I think. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I uh, I don't know. Some of those are some of, the, and that's the thing. I I think like the the price point's got to be right. Like I'm not, I can't drop the kind of money they were wanting for some of those seats. I'm like I, you know, just yeah, it's hard, hard for me to justify it uh, if I'm sitting up in even in the cheap seats for a hundred bucks and stuff. It's like it's, it's hard to vet. They severely underestimate my willingness to stay home. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> that's why I bought the. Uh, I just uh I just took Stacy to it was a while back, but we went to the Taylor Swift uh movie. You know, I was like, I'm not paying to go see the show, but I'll pay, you know, twenty bucks to watch the movie version of it mm-hmm. in, the, in the theater eating popcorn and stuff. How was like, it? I mean, really well done. Like I mean the 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 way they captured it all like is fantastic. But like you know, when you see all the production that she put into it and the dancers and how much uh work has actually gone into the show, like I mean it was like I, I understand it a lot more why the tickets were the way they where they were. And she's so. a huge star for a reason, man. Yeah. She's got good songs. I mean, there, there's she's got the whole package <clears> going on. <throat> yep. So uh, it's uh, like so. I, after watching the movie version, I was like, man, I I kind of want to go to the kind of want to go to this live show now. Yeah. So, uh, I, I bet that's how they get you. Yeah. 
Yeah. You didn't think it was going to be cool? Check it out. Right. She's got a football team now, don't she, or something? Yeah, Yeah. something like that. (laughs) Kansas City Swifts. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, Well, you mentioned uh, maybe uh, getting some – finishing up some things that we started. um, And uh, hopefully one of those includes some new Outrun the Fall. Uh, We did release a a new jam – Back in the summer, the rat alert. did really well for you guys online there and stuff on the uh streamer so check that out if you haven't to add it to your favorite playlist and turn it up loud please um but yeah hopefully we'll get some more to add to that this possibly sh- yeah. yeah i mean yeah i yeah we might have we might have something up our sleeves yeah you right. never know yeah. yeah we always seem to be up to something sure yeah big I, uh, things coming soon yeah big things coming yeah on the scene, man. Yep. <laughs> um, well, other than uh, Christmas themed uh, snacks and things, what what's uh, what do you guys you guys got anything else? Any other uh, tips uh, that come up lately? And also a uh, two part question on this. Uh, another thing I was thinking about um, made me laugh. Thinking uh, somebody's uh, I was listening to Stavi on uh, I forget which pod, but he was. Uh, he was talking about something came up about Breadco, uh, Panera, oh. and he says like, and he was going on about like the uh, broccoli cheddar soup, and he's like, I always like to I convince myself that that's healthy because it's got broccoli in it, and I kind of laughed. I was like, what's the, what's like the biggest like fat guy lie that you told yourself to like that this is this is healthy because it's 
got broccoli in it or whatever it might be or is there anything like that you guys are like oh yeah <laughs> yeah for me it's anything that has chicken in it right because you know ch- uh, like because it's a lean protein yeah. <laughs> lean chicken breast specifically is i mean that that's healthy if you just right. have that you know you steam it fry it well not fry it but air fry it we'll, we'll get into that um oh. uh, but uh yeah but no i just i consider it oh if it's got chicken it's good I mean, dude fried covered with breading covered with some sweet sauce that's got 300 calories on some crazy bun you know what I mean? <laughs> with covered in cheese like i still tell myself well i got the chicken though not right. the burger yeah it's like dude i got the diet coke yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. small diet right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah for me it's in anything chicken seems a little healthier even yeah. though you're, you're barely scratching the surface <laughs> yeah. i so mine mine is salad no, like I'll I'll eat salad. This is this is this is the move, right? <laughs> Even with lettuce, dude. <laughs> like, I will make salad the most unhealthy thing. Oh yeah, with the shit I will put in it or on it. <laughs> like, it, it, seriously, like my salads are far from healthy. All right, <laughs> there's lettuce in there. <laughs> a little bit. There's somewhere a little bit of lettuce. Somewhere um, the you have a pizza worth of pepperonis on top, you know? dude. I mean, you know, a hard boiled neat- egg. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, come enough on, cheese. Come to- on. Or, or, you know, if there's a chicken option, yeah, throw some chicken in there too. You know, yeah. th- there you go. Now it's a chicken salad. And <laughs> yeah. it's, it's healthy. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's, that's usually my, my fat guy lie is I'll, I'm eating salad. It might right. be a taco salad. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a salad, right? <laughs> I saw somebody said something also uh, just today. I heard uh, like that if you, uh, scrape the icing off of a cupcake that is that's just a muffin and muffins are healthy yeah so uh you know i was like <laughs> you know that's, that's good logic right there i can get behind that it's yeah, a good man. way to look at it yeah uh but dude as far as like foods that i'm on right now um i'm dude i'm really into spicy ramen any kind of spicy ramen noodle soup or something to yeah. that effect like I'm I'm exploring a lot of those right now. I like them. Um, okay. High in sodium, not very healthy yeah. again. <laughs> but it's soup. <laughs> I did uh, I did some of our meal prep with like uh, some. I kind of followed a recipe, but I also kind of winged it. Uh, and then like uh, it was like a spicy ramen noodles, uh, not the soup version, just the noodles. And like, but I think I might have went a little heavy on the uh sriracha and stuff in there because like i took that first bite and about burned my damn lips off yeah and i was like i was like uh i like it hot but that's like this is this is pretty intense and like and i was like stacy's really not gonna like this so i was like <laughs> stacy had one packed also yeah, right so i was like so i and then i i was able to salvage it because i started like you know putting in some uh um Greek yogurt and you know like I got it to diluted enough to where like it was pretty creamy then and it wasn't uh, as a uh, dump a little carton of milk yeah in it, right go down to the cafeteria and grab yeah. the kids yeah. milk yeah. well I uh, <laughs> I was able to save it and like it worked out but it was like that first bite I was like I was just well this was, I hadn't even packed it yet but it was just like on the while I was cooking I was like man that's intense like it's uh I was like I like it spicy but that's way too much but uh, I'm with you, man. Some spicy ramen, I can get. get yeah, that. dude, I, I'm I'm on that right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's real right. routine. We eat a lot yeah. of the same meals. Ryan's been on air fryer mode for a while. Like, I've ooh, been on air dude, fryer. Tell, tell him about the wings, bro. I've been on air fryer mode since probably 2020. Yeah, give or take, you know. Well, I like following you online. I get you. You can definitely tell. You know, like you go in these trends, like it was the cheese ball trend for for a good while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, now you're on. You're definitely in air. Your air fryer. Era. Yeah, yeah. I know pe- people seem to enjoy that. You know, and I'm I'm all about. You know, I want you to smile and laugh and like and consistency. C- consistency I found really does build a good trend. You right. know, and not that I care about. It's just like. Yeah, you think you yeah, like it? Cool. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I did cheese balls. I actually got like heavily addicted to them. <laughs> no, I did. I, I almost had to go to a doctor for it. I finally just, I literally quit them cold turkey because I can't control myself. That's why I'm 300 pounds. Um, I shouldn't be. Like you're just like getting the shakes and sweating. Like I, I, I do. I need, I'm, I need I'm, a cheese ball. I'm literally on extra medication. I'll suck your dick. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> that, that's, whatever the whatever those little puff balls are made out of, twenty bucks ha- is twenty bucks, yeah, man. It has to like start just yeah, like clogging up in your colon and one hundred percent. I'm I'm a huge air fryer fan. I'll sit here and talk to you all night about it. Uh, I, I just it, it's it's just a I killer made your, device. I made your wings. Yeah, yeah. So he, like he made some wings and then I copied it and they were fire. One of the easiest things to make in the air fryer for anybody that's like air fryer. Air fryer. Okay, let's start fresh. It's a convection oven. Okay, it's a tiny convection oven. It's not a fryer. They called it that because it excites you because we like fried food. Oh yeah, right. It's a convection oven. Cool. We got that out of the way. the The jig Hot is up. Air. Yeah, the jig is up. But the way it does it. In the, the 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 OG pot kind, which I think is the real air fryer, the toaster oven ones, uh, yeah, you kind of do it, but that's that's the toaster oven. No, man, so you need the vortex. You do. You you got to have the vortex with the pot because you got all the grease in the bottom, and it kind of does all the the good stuff. So, uh, just throw chicken wings. Science, bro. Put some oil on them, or don't. Uh, Kinder's brand called Kinder's. You can get what uh, well, honestly whatever seasoning you like. I don't care. But Kinder's has one called uh, the blend. It's just salt, pepper, garlic, done deal. Throw some of that on there. That's your base. That kind of gives you all the good. You can honestly just do that and be happy. But what do we do? The wood fire garlic. Wood, wood fire garlic. Also Kinder's. Just do do you some. You hit that of, about like halfway through. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, that's what I, I, I hit a little bit. And then a little bit when I turn them, I just make sure it's like ah, done deal. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. I, I think it's it's right up there with any dry rub restaurant wings I've ever had. Yeah. 100%. And, and it's not that, oh, I'm about. No, it's just, it's it's super simple. And they're awesome. Like, I don't need to go to. I paid 20 bucks for wings like that. Yeah. At a restaurant. Seriously. I mean, I forget. Do, do you have an air fryer yet? Yeah. Christmas is coming up if you don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, highly recommend it to everybody. I need a big one. I need a bigger one. Same. I've always, yeah. How many quarts you got? Uh, how many quarts am I working with? I think, I think I seven. Got, I think I only got like the five quart. No, you need a bigger one. Uh, yeah, well, I got a little one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. But it, it's all right. We, a lot of us struggle with that. Just a bunch of guys talk my wish they had a bigger one. Yeah, you know, I do. I, they, they've even got the ones that they've got the, the, the dual basket, you know, for like if you want to do something and something else and you don't want it all. Mm-hmm. Like, the you know, tendies and fries or something. I don't know that that's that important, but uh, well, I was looking at like barbecue grills that have one built into it. So you got a little, you got an air fryer drawer going while you're cooking on the cooktop. So Ninja brand, like the brand, they make really, really good stuff. Like they're they're kind of like the Dyson of the kitchen, in my opinion. Like they they've got. I got the ice cream machine. You damn right. See that's yeah. The creamer, dude. I make like homemade ice cream. It's awesome. See. <laughs> You, you got to be a ninja. Yeah, they've even got a, little, a smoker now. It's an air fryer, but it's but it's taller top basically, and it can it can it's an outdoor smoker, but you just sit it in a garage or wherever, smoke the whole place out. But it's awesome. Um, I don't have one, but a buddy does, and I've read a lot of reviews. It's what I do. Amazing. Why not? They're expensive, man. You got to save your lunch money, <laughs> and then you make your lunches. You meal prep. So I, I meal prep at Wendy's. It's not proper. <laughs> But uh, dude, four five, for four. I was just gonna say four for four. I'm sometimes I go five for five if I if I'm feeling a little frisky. Uh, Why not? Or no, four for five. Sorry, same amount of stuff, more money. We got to get a junior bacon cheeseburger for the drive home. That's it. That's it. Sometimes you need a double stack. All right, come on. I know you've had a good double stack. Oh yeah. What other fast food place can you get a baked potato? Okay, maybe it's a <laughs> microwave potato. But where else? Hey, that's healthy though. Wendy's, big sponsor of Rock Paper Podcast. Yeah, proud sponsor, right? I hope. I love Wendy's. Same. Uh, yeah, I haven't been to a Wendy's, Wendy's in a while. Most should, people probably haven't. Should, probably should fix it. Yeah. Wh- but uh, true or false, the yellow Wendy's slapped harder than the current red Wendy's. You know what I'm talking about? The, the yellow, the, the old yellow packages. Right. It was better back then, was it not? <laughs> Let's bring it back. That's bring, like bring back the yellow. That's packaging. like McDonald's is better with a play place. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I I, I actually don't know if they if they turned a corner with that <laughs> paper change or color change. I miss uh, styrofoam containers. Uh, 
I yeah. did uh, zone. Come on, Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. Deal with it. <laughs> I, I, I might get canceled for talking shit yeah, on dude. Earth. I better stop. Yeah, you better stop. No, uh, those uh, Wendy's commercials are really uh, top notch. Uh, those make me laugh pretty hard too. Uh, for uh, you know, fast food advertising um, with those guys, uh, like the uh, the you know the two honks in the drive through and stuff, and like and all the you know what I'm talking about. I don't. You haven't seen those? I don't watch enough TV. I don't think. Yeah. I was thinking of the Sonic ones where the two dudes are talk, talking stupid stuff. Well, the, that, yeah. That's who those I was thinking are, of, too. too. I was like, yeah, those guys are talking yeah. about... Wait, that's Sonic. It's yeah. Sonic, yeah. <laughs> well, there's, uh, so like, there's been a current like uh, Wendy stuff like where they go like... Uh, there's like a guy that looks like Santa Claus and they're like are, like thinking that like, is that the real one? You know, and, whatever. Oh, okay. and, they're, like, and then they go and like pulls on his beard and sits on his lap and, <laughs> and like and so he's like uh he's anyway. like i'm just here for a junior yeah, frosty yeah, yeah, it's like, like, Ooh, frosty well, yeah i guess they got like a new like peppermint uh frosty or something like that i think that's I try it they had a strawberry one for a minute i never tried it weak yeah. it wasn't great it wasn't good nah good, I'm not a big fan oh uh, got a snack item real quick Ooh, all right here we go my co-worker nick turned me on to this it is at you ever go to scooter's coffee I don't either. I'm not a coffee drinker, right? So I, w- I wouldn't go there. He brings me in this. He's like, hey, I got this from Scooters. And I'm immediately thinking, oh, man, I just don't I don't really fool with coffee. No, it's this frozen drink. It's called a peanut butter um, peanut butter crisp or peanut butter. His was called peanut butter power. It, it has like a, I guess it's got some. Uh, um, Bee pollen. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but. I, th- I think I think you're right. No, there's smoothies that they put yeah, that shit in. But dude, <laughs> this thing tastes literally just like a Reese's peanut butter cup. It was as good as something you'd get at Dairy Queen. Yeah. I'm dead serious. Peanut butter bee pollen plus. Uh, I'm isolating that audio. <laughs> that's gonna, that's, gonna, that's gonna be my new text tone. Bee pollen. Yeah, just to give me any, yeah. Adult diapers. No. But the Peanut butter power or something. Yeah, all right. Frozen drink. Scooters. Get one. I promise you, if you like peanut butter, forget it. Out of the park. I do like peanut butter. Well, get it. Is it like coffee flavored? No. Like- Actually, get it with mocha, though. The mocha doesn't hurt. It's not coffee at all. It literally just tastes like something you would get at Dairy Queen. All right. And it is better than most things at Dairy Queen. Because people have told me stuff similar to this, like uh, Stacy likes some... Uh, she likes coffee though she likes it. she there's something like and she's like you know mocha chocolate chip crap whatever on them and she's like oh my god you gotta try it it's so good and then i'm like and then i find out it like has like a, a hint of like coffee flavor with it and i'm like no nope, i'm out like, zero yeah, yeah. It, it's it's I, literally a dessert drink and it's awesome <laughs> so i'm a coffee drinker in the morning i usually will have like a cup or two just to like get going especially if i'm like tired and was up late the night before but I have to do everything in my power to make it not taste like coffee. Yeah. Like I want the effect of the coffee. I don't want to taste it. Right. And I, and like I'm kind of the same way. Like with like Starbucks. Like I like to go to Starbucks. I like to be a person who goes to Starbucks. Like the mm. the activity itself to me is enjoyable. Oh yeah. But I don't drink. I wouldn't drink half the shit there. You know. So it's. But I do have a couple go tos there where I can I can navigate a little bit and it just tastes like dessert. I need to go get, speaking of drinks, I need to go get uh, one of those new uh, Panera 5 Loco yeah, lemonades. The fifth Loco, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't had one yet, but dude, if it does what it says it does, then. If it kills people or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I read it, it like has like 310 milligrams of uh, caffeine, caffeine oh, in, yeah. in a 30 ounce. Yeah. And I was like. It's their charged lemonades. Yeah. They've had them for a long time. But I was like, I don't know. I mean, like. I, know. I know that I I know that's a lot, but I don't think it's like, I mean, like, would kill somebody. But apparently, that's what happened. Yeah, well, yeah, man. If, if you have a heart condition, yeah, right, you, you, probably, you probably shouldn't be drinking. Heart will I was I was just gonna say like, like doing I, drugs. I've got to be careful with my anxiety. Not kidding at all. I probably wouldn't fool with it because yeah. you get your heart racing, and that just throws me into a tizzy. But if if you can rock that stuff, get it. Yeah, I like uh, those like uh, memes that are like uh, you know for Red Bull, like my. I got anxiety, and then it's like, and then he drinks a Red Bull, and like now I have, now I have anxiety faster. So yeah, that's water. what it like, does. Uh, now anxiety's gotten yeah. faster. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now it's supercharged anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Well, yeah. Uh, we'll snag some tickets. Come out and join us at Diamond Music Hall January 5th. Come on. Out, outrun the Fall is going to be uh, thrown down. and With special uh, guest. Yeah, special guest. Trapped. Trapped. And uh, like I said, tickets available now. And uh, you can find more Outrun the Fall on all your favorite uh, streaming platforms. MySpace, Get, get plugged in on uh, the uh, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, But yeah, I appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. Appreciate yeah, you man. sharing your snack hacks. And uh, it's always a good time catching yeah, up dude. with some buds. We love you, man. We appreciate it. Love you guys. Uh, all right. That's it. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.